After September 11th, uh, I would say that people definitely look at me a lot differently. Um, I get a lot more stares, comments. You know, the American dream is that you're rewarded for your hard work. Some people think that it's our country. Why do we need people like these in our country? You know, if you're different, you're bad is very common anywhere you go in the world. My name is Angad Singh. I'm a 14-year-old freshman at Milton High. I'm in the marching band and play basketball. I might be considered a normal American teen. And then again, maybe not. Why? Because I'm also a Sikh. I have a visible identity. I do not cut my hair. And I wear a turban. And no, I am not a member of the Taliban or Bin Laden. Recently, I was shocked to hear about hate crimes committed against Sikh youth around the country at their schools. In one case, a Sikh boy's turban was set on fire. Another's cut forcibly in the school bathroom. One was brutally beaten, and a girl's hair was cut against her will. What really causes Americans to behave so cruelly towards these people? Weren't they American also? It left me wondering whether I'm safe and whether I'm able to achieve my dreams while keeping my identity. For the most part, the kids at my school like me. Most of them have known me for a few years now. But what about the people that see me for the first time? What do they think about me? Am I an outsider, a threat, or even an enemy? Is it necessary for me to conform to society in order to achieve my goals in life? Do I need to cut off my heritage in order to achieve my American dreams? Or can I have both at the same time? Looking for answers, I searched for Sikhs in the US that have been successful. My research took me to Dalip Singh Sand. He was a PhD in mathematics and a successful farmer. But most importantly, he was the first Asian American to be elected to the US Congress. However, Congressman Sand gave up his Sikh identity to achieve his American dreams. But did he really have to? Our country was founded on the basis of freedom, equality, and liberty for all. But does everyone believe in the freedom of religion and ideas? Every day, I see more and more Sikhs cutting their hair just so they can fit in and deal with bullies and discrimination. Do I need to cut off my heritage just so I can fit in? I think I should be accepted just the way I am. Last summer, I was invited to a Sikh youth leadership retreat in West Virginia. It was an opportunity to meet more young Sikhs from all over the country aspiring to be the leaders of tomorrow. The camp offered workshops in journalism, art, and filmmaking in addition to Sikh culture and beliefs. The camp also featured guest speakers like a young world kayaking champion and experts in leadership and technology. I asked the youth how they dealt with challenges they faced. Did their experiences make them want to conform? Or did it make them stronger in their beliefs? Were they as determined as me to keep our roots and still soar high on our wings? Tell me, what are your roots? Well, my roots are my traditions. I speak Hindi and Punjabi, Balle Balle. 
Mm, I come from a Sikh family. My parents came from Punjab. So I've been raised um, in a Punjabi family, but in the Bay Area, in California. The definition, or where is the homeland of the Sikhs, you, would, you wouldn't just say India, you would say Punjab. My heritage? I'm a Sikh. What values of Sikhi do you cherish the most? Uh, well, Sikhi teaches me humility, it teaches me forgiveness, uh, it teaches me love, it teaches me to look at every single person you know, as though they, they have you know, God within them. One of the things I, that I uh, cherish most about, about Sikhi is its sense of activism. Sikhi is centralized on love. You know, once you recognize that love is the center of everything, any way that you treat people, any way that you treat towards yourself, if it is based in love, it's going to be right. The truth, being truthful, is one Sikh value that I think is really great. Um, the basic concept of behind the religion, while managing your work, your life, your personal life, your business life, and still being connected with God. And Sikhism, we, know, we, we celebrate every part of life, whether it be birth, marriage, even death is a celebration of, you know, the union of the soul with Waiguru. 15th century India was burning in religious wars, exploitation by its rulers, and social evils, such as the inequalities of caste, class, and gender. Even the religious leaders exploited the common man who had nowhere to go and forced them into practices where animals and even women were sacrificed. Born in Punjab, Guru Nanak started a spiritual reform that brought people from all walks of life closer to each other and empowered them, teaching them the simple and honest ways, tolerance, the oneness of humanity, and ridding them of social evils and rituals. His ideas and actions were extremely revolutionary at the time, especially the ones about equality. No one had ever given a woman a higher status than a man. He said, where the downtrodden are looked after, O oh God, there exists your grace and blessing. His followers came to be known as Sikhs and the movement Sikhism. What challenges have you faced for being who you are? When I first came to America from India, um, a lot of people didn't know about Sikhism back then. So um, I had to explain to them what, what, who I am, what I do. But some kids would ask me, are you from Afghanistan? Did you have anything to do with 9-11? Some kids asked me that and I got really mad and I was like, no, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, sometimes I've been called you know, Osama or Saddam Hussein or it's, it's just ignorance, but you know, this is just people's way. You know, the, you know, it's, uh, it's just their, their, their ignorance. They're like, why, why are you wearing that funny tomato on your head? What's that thing on your head? Yeah, I, I heard that a lot. Like in my, in my elementary school, they used to be like, go back to India, why are you here? We don't need your population to build up. Middle school, they just, they just thought I was a terrorist. They were like, you terrorist, get out of here. The stuff like that, that nobody, was want, nobody wants to hear. In my opinion, stereotypes cloud others for seeing us for who we really are. Our identity is more than what people see on the outside. It is our values and our character. My identity is who I am and not what I'm perceived as. Uh, these two boys named Jake and Garrett, they were, uh, we were on our bus and they kept on calling me terrorist. And it happened a long time. And one day I just got sick of it. And when Jake was about to get off of the bus, I like pushed him into a seat. I didn't really want to do it, but I just I, I couldn't control myself anymore. I think there were there were definitely times where I where I felt like uh, you know the peer pressure probably got the best of me, and I felt like wow maybe maybe I'm not cut out for this. Challenges are something that we all must face. 
The important thing is how we face them, the courage we show while facing them, and the lessons that we learn from them. Bhagat Singh Tind was the first Sikh to fight for the U.S. in World War I while wearing a turban. However, after the war, he was denied citizenship because he was not a free white man. He challenged the racist laws. His activism was important in establishing citizenship rights for immigrants of color. How do you deal with the challenges you face? The best way to confront the people was just telling them who you are in a nice tone, not in a mean tone, and trying to relate to them in ways that um, they can understand. I didn't like shout at them. I didn't like hit them. I just tried to like educate them about the our religion. You know, they're telling me what Jesus said, and I would tell them what Guru Nanak said or what Guru Amar Das said. So in that sense, I I tried to engage in more dialogue. I. I would face the confrontations with just by informing them mainly, try to give them as much knowledge about what they didn't understand as I could. I figured the more people who know about it, the less that people will ask or the less they will try to harass you for about it. Uh, when somebody does say something offensive or harass me in some way, just walking in the mall or wherever, I make a point to stop, turn around and walk right over to that person and, and just very nicely walk up to them and say, hi, my name is Ruben, shake their hand and, uh, you know, just see how they react because they're not even expecting, you know, for me to not, not only turn around and talk to them, but they're not expecting to hear, hear somebody without an accent, you know, it, it just kind of breaks their stereotype. And I think that's probably the one thing, you know, I, I say directly to people that when, when, when I am harassed or taunted you know, uh, these days, you know, education is going to, you know, it will set you free. <laughs> Um, you have to like, you have to like make them sit down, look into your, look into their eyes, and tell them, "Hey, man, I'm I'm not a tomato head. Um, I know I'll tell you who I am. I'm a Sikh, a mighty mighty Sikh." And like, you have to tell them why you have um, your hair like tied up in a butka, and who your gurus are, and everything. You have to tell them from from the first day of history to the last. You have to give them like a social studies lesson. Do you feel that you have an additional responsibility of educating others because you are a minority? I think I do have responsibility as a minority, but I think more so um, responsibility as a Sikh. Because uh, in the situations like being taunted or being harassed, I know if I, don't, if I don't say something, if I don't stop, if I don't try to educate that person, uh, then that person can very likely just go to the next Sikh they see. And I think as you know, as I said, Sikh culture is very empowering. American culture is very empowering. And as someone who feels so empowered, I feel we definitely have an obligation to speak to those who don't feel so confident. So we definitely have a responsibility for each other. Like having, if somebody has questions about you in their mind, it's not good if, they, if it just stays in there because then they can like interpret things that might not be true. So I think just doing what you can to get the word out there as as six, it's our responsibility to let people know who we are. You know, Christians aren't going to advocate for us, Jews aren't going to advocate for us, Muslims aren't going to advocate for us. Everybody advocates for themselves and we need to do the same. We can't expect it to be done. Being a Sikh with a distinct identity has its own responsibilities, not just constantly educating others about us, but also to do good for others and to stand up for what is right, to be a good role model for everyone. In fact, this is one of the reasons why our spiritual teachers gave us a distinct identity. So that when people see us, they will know that we have the courage to stand up for ourselves and for those in need. Do you consider yourself a Sikh or an American? I was born in America, but I'm third generation here. I see myself as both a Sikh and American. 
Definitely both. There's no difference between being a Sikh versus being an American. Both encourage a very strong work ethic. Both encourage, you know, giving back to your community. Both, you know, they're very community-oriented cultures. As as all these different cultures have influenced me, I do see quite a bit of similarities between them. In the Indian tradition, you know, you respect your elders, you, you listen to them. Same thing in the Iranian culture, your, your family is a large part of who you are. It's that same American concept where you don't know where you're going until you know where you're from. On Vesakhi Day, we have a lot of melas, we have fun activities. And from American culture, I think the thing that I like the most would be, I guess, 4th of July fireworks. Punjabis and Sikhs alike enjoy celebrations. Punjabis are very, you know, they're very work hard, party hard. In America, you listen to hip hop, rap, whatnot, alternative, big guitars and whatnot. In India, it's the big tolkis playing, the tablas. Do your peers see you as a Sikh or as an American? When I'm at school, my friends uh, see me as an American with a little different perspective on things. And my friends used to joke that I'm like a coconut when I was growing up. I was brown on the outside, but white on the inside. It, and I guess over the years that's sort of changed and now I'm just a patchwork of many things. Um, people in my school or like peers, for when they first see me, they're like, first like not that, like they don't, they're not willing to talk to me as much. Like when I'm at work, when I'm amongst my coworkers, uh, I think to a large extent they, they look at me as, as an American. Um, but uh, you know, pretty much just because of the way I look, uh, anywhere else, uh, I'm definitely, uh, definitely looked at as a sick person. Imagine yourself in their shoes. Living in a society where people think you're not American based solely on how you look. Would you compromise your values to fit in? No, not, no. I would not compromise my values because if I do something just to blend in, try to look cool, it's gonna make me look like a bigger fool. The way I am is the way I want to show the world I am. Is the USA a good place for minorities? They, we have freedom of religion. We have all of our rights as equal as anybody else in the US. I think the US is um, more open towards minority groups than other countries that I've been to. I don't think that there's um, anywhere that's as open to minority groups uh, as much as I would like to see. I definitely think that, you know, if you're different, you're bad, is very common anywhere you go in the world. Um, and I think there are people out there who don't believe that, who do believe that if you're different, that's cool, whatever. It's a free country, you have the freedom of speech, and you can do and say whatever you like. And for minorities, that's a big thing because not every country you can do that. Like, some places you can't have this freedom of speech. You can't like, you know, hate your government. Over here you can hate your government. No one will care. Instead of being like a melting pot, we're a bag of assorted jelly beans, really. We're all basically the same, you know, same shape, same design, same size. But we're all different, we're all unique. We all have our own flavor. Things may not be perfect here, but at least the Constitution gives everyone a right to their personal beliefs and education. In France, children my age have been deprived of the basic human right to a public education because they are not allowed to go to schools with their head covered. For the last three years, French sick boys and Muslim girls have not been allowed to go to school in the name of secularism. It's ironic. If you keep in mind that nearly 100,000 Sikh soldiers fought and died for France in both world wars. And yes, they were wearing their turbans. However, the U.S. has a long way to go also. The U.S. is called the melting pot. 
where people give up their cultures and blend together to create a new culture. But is it necessary to lose your heritage to be a good American? Isn't there room in America for a salad bowl too, where individuals can hold on to their cultural uniqueness and still coexist with others? Of course, no salad is complete without the perfect dressing that binds it. And that dressing is our love for our country and the principles of life, liberty, and justice for all. What is your message to intolerant people around the world? What I would like to say to intolerant people across the world is that, like, they need to stop making fun of us. We are just like them. We're not aliens. We're not people from Mars. We're from India, and that's on Earth, you know? We're not from, we didn't rise from the dead, you know? So you, you, they need to treat us like we are one of them. My message to them is wake up. I mean, we have a world where the market is in, it's increasingly globalized. You know, everybody's interacting with everybody else. We have products coming in from everywhere, going out to everywhere. We're dealing with all kinds of companies, all kinds of people. I mean, to just dismiss someone who is unlike you is stupid. <laughs> Read a book. <laughs> Read a book. I think, uh, you know, we limit ourselves in our life um, so much by uh, just uh, by our ignorance. You know, everyone is unique in their own different way. And simply by the color of their skin or their hair or what they wear um, doesn't mean anything about them. Mr. Joshmo, this is one thing I have to say to you. Just because we look different doesn't mean we are different. We have hearts, we have bodies, we have minds. It's just that we have a little bit more facial hair and a patka and a pagdi. People who are open, like open to learn, they'll come to me, talk to me, and they're just fine. They're, they're actually like, they become like really good friends. And people who are just ignorant, ignorant and make, tease, make, make fun of you, they think they're really smart when they're not educated at all. What is your message to fellow Sikhs and Americans? I would say hold on to your culture and your roots no matter what people say because no matter what you'll always be accepted somewhere. There's no need to conform to other people. The best thing to do is just educate them because they'll educate more people and no matter what you'll still have your culture and your roots which you can always rely on and always use to push you ahead and give you some sort of pride in what you're doing. The best way to encourage and get other people to understand and not take it offensively is for them simply to be as open as possible to explain every little thing and just to be super outgoing with it because if you're shy about it then they think that maybe there's something wrong with that but if you're just hey check me out I'm Sikh and whatever then the kids will be way more accepting. It was Gandhi who said, be the change you wish to see. If we want people to recognize us as a certain type of citizen, we need to be that citizen. If we want people to recognize six as people who do public service, we need to do public service. I think it's really um, being proactive and taking every opportunity possible. Our community tends to wait until something goes wrong, until we, uh, until we say something, until we get out there. We wait till there's some type of crisis before we start going out, knocking on doors, and introducing ourselves to the neighbors. Accept others, not because of how they look, because of who they are and how they are from inside. After a week of listening to the kids in camp, I've found that they too have experienced prejudice Discrimination, harassment, and hate crimes are all caused by ignorance. But who is going to fix this? Most of the kids I talk to are trying to educate their peers. But how much educating can or should we do? The burden of educating cannot only fall on us. At least, I hope it doesn't. 
Perhaps the education system needs to do more to promote diversity and educate the teachers and students and their parents about little known minorities such as the Sikh community and other ethnic groups that make up the fabric of our society. Today, the burden of fighting ignorance and prejudice falls often on those who face it. That is why I'm here today, to share the struggle of the Sikh youth with you. But it isn't only our struggle. It is also the struggle of a Muslim girl that wears a hijab, or a Jewish boy that wears a yarmulke, or even a kid whose first language isn't English. Perhaps you can make a difference in our lives. Perhaps your school could start a diversity program where children who are different can be appreciated for who they are and not for how they look. Perhaps you can reach out to your neighbors and learn about their culture and share yours with them. Everything you do matters. Small acts of kindness strengthen the children who feel left out, who might not spread their wings normally. Giving a little respect and dignity can always go a long ways. I personally have a lot of kind and open people who I owe my confidence and success to. My peers, my friends, my neighbors, my coaches, and my teachers, who all took the time to know what I really am about and who have embraced and encouraged me. One person that made a difference in my life was my second grade teacher. In first grade, my teacher didn't really like me. And even though I made a lot of friends that year, I still felt a little bit lonely. In second grade, I fell sick a few days into the school year. My teacher came over to my house with a handmade card from my fellow classmates. Her act of kindness made me look forward to going to school for the rest of the year. She took the time to make a difference in my life and I won't ever forget that. Miss Williams is a feather on my wings. Won't you make a difference in someone's life and be a feather on their wings? Um, if they got a five day suspension, I had one day in school suspension and it, it, uh, my dean messed up the paperwork. So I didn't get it in school suspension either. It, so I was uh, like practically off the hook. Oh, let me talk to him. Oh, let me talk to him. Oh, shorty had him apple bottom jean jean boots with the fur, with the fur. The whole club was looking at her. She hit the floor, she hit the floor. Next thing you know, shorty got low, 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 low. Don't you wish I could reverse? Don't you? 
All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.